Okay, the MBDyne collision module is rock solid and ready for productive use for planes and spheres. We'll demonstrate the capabilities, show you some plots, um, indicate how you might use this. Um, but let's get started quickly with a uh, demonstration of real-time analysis. So we are running right now MBDyne and uh, we're watching this sphere object collide with this plane object. Um, and to give you a sense, there's our model. So let's walk through the model and then analyze it. Um, we have uh, stream animation so you can see the behavior in real time. Gravity at you know 9.81, a clamp at the origin. The plane is attached to the clamp. That is a, a collision object, the plane. We have an MBDyne bottle with body with a sphere attached to that, which is a collision object. Then we have a structural force, um, which for this model, we are applying an absolute force using a template drive um, with a string in the x direction of uh, 100 newtons for 0.05 seconds. So it's an impulse, right, to get start the the motion in the uh, positive x direction. And then we have a collision world which includes these two objects. So again, when we run this model, uh, the regular MBDyne analysis is being performed as well as collisions using the collision module. Now let's uh, include the keyframes so you can watch that in real time. So this is how uh, the uh, real simulation in real time is. So as you can see, um, it looks real, right? Because it's uh, analyzing real behavior. Um, we can plot a couple of things from this. Um, for instance, we can plot the normal force between the ball and the plane, and we can plot the frictional force in the x direction, uh, that's global, and the frictional force in the global z direction. So plotting this, you'll see um, well, here's the uh, normal force, which starts out rather high um, on the impact, and, it, and eventually it uh, steadies out at uh, 9.81 newtons because the object itself is one uh, 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 kilogram. But then the, uh, we should also look at the tangential forces. When the ball hits, um, we have a... Um, the tangential forces are first rather high, and then they uh, eventually uh, just uh, cause, at this point, the ball to accelerate due to it rolling downhill. Um, okay, so uh, let's add another object to this. Um, let's add another ball, and let's watch how the two interact with one another. So for that, we'll simply add a body and we'll grab this and put it somewhere over here. We'll add uh, a sphere around that body. Okay. So now, right now, we have this. They're not all connected. So if we were to run the model, the ball just, the new body just falls, right? So we need to add it to the collision world. So there's a couple of things we need to do. One is that the collision world currently includes these. We'll add the sphere. see here. We do do that by editing the collision world. The other is that within the collision world we currently have a ball table uh, pair and we need to have a material pair for ball ball so that they can collide as well. So we'll create a material pair for those two and um, right now initially we'll have no friction between the two balls and you'll see them collide after uh, they first hit the, uh, uh, let's see here, let's grab this put it a little closer and now let's run the model and there we go right now um, we can add friction between the two balls as well and we'll make this one uh, 0.01 whereas the friction between the balls and the table is 0.1 go. Right. Now the other thing, let's go back to a simpler model uh, because I want to show you the uh, uh, depth of penetration. So let's start by 
going back to our collision world and uh, take it back to the simple model without the second sphere. So, and we can also remove that material pair just to simplify things. Now we'll uh, delete the new sphere and the new body, get rid of those from the from our kind of design space. And now if we go back and rerun this, you'll see we have the same model we started with. And by the way, let me uh, let's get rid of those keyframes. Okay, animation, clear keyframes. All right. Now to simplify this, we'll make the plane level, and we'll move this so that it's right on top of the plane. And uh, now let's run the simulation. Now, all right. Now when we run this, uh, after we ran it, which we just did, now we can, let's say for the, um, for the body, we can plot its motion. And the motion um, uh, that we'll plot is the U velocity the omega-2, which is about the y-axis. Uh, we're looking at, by the way, the xz plane. And um, so with those two, what we shall see is that <coughs> uh, it eventually uh, settles out at these uh, angular velo uh, linear velocity here and this angular velocity here. Well, that is representative of a, of a collision world where, uh, let's see here, where the penetration is 100% into the plane. So when the ball's rolling, it's rolling about its full circumference. But let's change that collision world, and let's make it so that the ball doesn't penetrate at all. And that would be as if it were, let's say, a flat tire. And uh, the plane was um, imper impervious. So now, <coughs> if we run this, you'll see the ball, it rotates um, at a different angular rate. And let's plot it now. We'll plot the ball's um, velocity in the x-direction and its omega-2 as we've done before. And now if we compare what we have now with what we had before, we see that the uh, linear velocity is unchanged, but the angular velocity increased. And it increased because the, um, well, let's plot it out here and you can plot out the keyframes. Uh, the angular velocity increased because the uh, radius of rotation is smaller because now the ball is rotating about here rather than rotating about its circumference. Um, so one more. <coughs> Let's uh, put a few more balls in here just for an interesting uh, kind of uh, simulation. Um, let's go back uh, first thing and uh, change that penetration back to 1. So the balls are as if they, uh, they are hard and the surface is soft. And um, now let's go ahead and do what we did before, but add a few more balls and, and uh, play a game of, um, a simple game of pool, right? So, and then after this, I'll show you the uh, MBDyne input file. So uh, we'll add a body. We'll grab it. Now let's, hold on. Grab it. There we go. We'll put that body there. We'll, ah, come on. We're going to move that body here. There we go. We'll add another body. Oops. Ah, just a second. This will go quick. We'll add another body. Move it there. Add another body. So we're going to do three balls. Now, the first one will <coughs> add a sphere around it. Good. The second one, same thing.
and finally a sphere around the third ball. Okay, now let's move these and let's tighten them up a bit. There we go. Uh, oh, we need to put them all into the collision world. Okay, so let's go to our collision world right here and uh, add them in. We also need to put the ball ball material back in so a ball can impact another ball. Um, and then we will use that same friction we had before. Um, here the uh, penetration ratio can be anything because the um, it's actually 50 percent. Clearly two materials impinge upon one another at the same uh, ratio. And when we run the simulation, boom, there we go. And we can look at this at different angles in real time while it's running. So there you go. Now, just so you see this a little differently, one more simulation. We will take the ball and grab it in the y direction, let's say 0.2, so we can see what happens when it hits from a slight angle. There we go. So there is the MVDyne collision modules. Um, any objects eventually will be able to be simulated. Uh, the only ones that have been vetted are ball, ball, or sphere, sphere, and sphere, plane. So to see the uh, input file, uh, and then I'll show you how you can set this up, um, the input file that we began with uh, looked like this. It's a, like any other MVDyne input file that you might see. Uh, except for this is just showing a, uh, a plane and a ball. Um, so what we have here is a user-defined collision object um, which we're calling sphere and it's uh, connected to the ball mass basically that's the, the node called the ball or the, the, um, and then we have the, uh, the ball itself which is a sphere of radius 1. And then we have uh, also, oh, up here, the other user-defined object, which is a collision object, which is what we're calling, it's made out of the table material, and it's a plane. And then in our collision world, we have a material pair of uh, ball and table. And then um, we have these collision objects, the plane and the sphere. When we finished uh, with the four objects, you can see what we actually had is we had the same plane that we had before, uh, right here, and then we had one, two, three, four user-defined spheres, uh, which all were made out of ball material, and they all had a radius of one. And then in our collision world, we now had two material pairs. We had the ball table as well as the ball ball, and uh, then we added all of these collision objects into um, our collision world. So to do this, uh, navigate over to github.com, gdbaldw, and in here there's three uh, repositories. Um, one is the collision module itself, which um, you uh, are welcome to uh, examine. It is pretty much uh, done, um, other than if you want to add ways to output uh, values, but it's done. Um, then you have the uh, uh, the flexible collision library, which is a very nice library. Um, it has been branched and modified, and I believe we'll need to continue using this branch um, because MBDyne, of course, is highly precise, and that level of precision needs to be included in the library, which is not in place right now. So uh, for each kind of object, um, they need to be vetted and the code needs to perhaps be changed. And then finally, to use the graphical interface, which is not required but highly recommended, um, you have the Blender and MBDyne. So there you have it, um, a, um, a complete rock-solid, ready-for-productive-use collision 
module for planes and spears. Enjoy. Thank you.